Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch with some interesting news for game developers and extremely interesting news for Linux gamers, and that is that Valve just dropped Proton on the world. Now what exactly is Proton? Well this is, in a nutshell, a compatibility layer that enables you to run Windows games directly from Steam. To get into a little bit more detail, this is actually kind of a custom version of Wine. And what exactly is Wine? Well I want to say that Wine is an emulator that allows you to run Windows products on Linux, but considering Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator, I won't use that definition, but it's basically a compatibility layer that allows you to run Windows software on Linux products. And basically, Valve took to it, extended it, mixed in a bunch of other technologies, worked it into the beta version of the Valve client, and or so the Steam client, and basically now if you are a Linux user and you don't have a Linux version of your game, there's a good chance you can run the Windows version. So let's jump in with a bit more detail. Now, of course, I'm going to toss these links down below, as I always do, uh, but the announcement is up on um, the Steam forums. And basically what they are saying here is pretty much just what I just said. Um, what they've done is created a modified distribution of Wine called Proton, which provides compatibility with Windows game titles. Uh, so here you can see they talk about what they actually did to Wine. Uh, so Windows games with no Linux version currently available can now be installed and run directly from the Linux Steam client. And this is part of, this part's kind of amazing. Well, the Steamworks part is meh, but open VR support. I'm finding that kind of shocking. So not only can you run Windows games, you can run a Windows VR games potentially. Uh, there's DirectX 11 and 12 implementations because of their Vulkan layer. Now, you know, Vulkan and, um, Valve have been working strongly there, or at least Valve has been working strongly uh, to support the Vulcan product, especially with projects like uh, Molten VK, which I've mentioned elsewhere. Uh, so now you can sort of see some of the end game here. Basically, if they use the Vulcan compatibility layer, this stuff all works quite well. We'll see that in a second. On uh, top, full screen support has been improved. Uh, should seamlessly stretch to the desired display without interfering with the native monitor resolution or requiring the use of virtual desktops. Um, improved game controller support games will automatically recognize all controllers supported by Steam, which is pretty freaking awesome. And performance for multi-threaded games has been greatly improved compared to vanilla wine. Uh, now the question mark is what, okay, we'll get back to this. This is the initial lot of games that are coming, but what are the underlying technologies that run this guy? And here we can see some of the guys that they worked with. Now, if you thought, hey, this sounds kind of familiar, isn't there another company working on this kind of stuff? And yeah, there is. There's a company called Code Weavers, and apparently Valve have been working with them since 2016. Some of the technologies there are VKD3D, which is what allows them to run the Direct3D implementation over top of Vulkan so that you can actually run or emulate um, Direct3D calls via Wine or Proton. Uh, OpenVR and Steamworks native API bridges, many Wine 3D performance functionality fixes for Direct3D 9 and Direct3D 11, overhauled full screen and gamepad support, and eSync patch set for multi-thread performance improvements. So this is very much targeted at Linux users users. And there is a subset of games. I'll get back to that one in a second. Uh, but that is just the games that they've actually tested and support and show that they work. Now, the interesting thing is, how does this perform? And the answer is, depends. If it's running Vulkan as the underlying rendering layer, uh, pretty much full speed. If it's running uh, an API translation layer, so if it's a G Direct 3D 9 or Direct 3D 11 game, um, there is that translation required and that will slow things down. So you're obviously not going to run at the same speed as on the Windows platform unless Vulkan is the underlying renderer, but you should be awfully close. So that's pretty cool, actually. Um, but there's more details here. What I also found interesting is this comment. So Mac OS users... Well, Wine is available on macOS, so does Proton, which is somewhat confusing, but there are no plans to support Steam Play functionality on macOS. So I don't really know where that leaves you people. I'm sorry to say it. So the Proton layer, this custom version of Wine, apparently uh, does work on macOS, but the maybe just they're not going to integrate it in the Steam client. I'm not exactly sure how that works out, but if you're interested in jumping in and you're on the Linux version, basically sign up for the... Um, the beta stream of the Linux client, of the Steam client, and you can download and use Proton today. Now, from the developer side of things, if you're interested in learning more, there is a GitHub page up. Again, I will toss this link down below. You can see the various different dependencies that it's pulling in, such as Molten VK, SDL, uh, LibPNG, OpenVR, VR Client, there's Wine itself. Uh, this is a pretty massive project, but you can basically see how to get things up and going. Here's the easiest way if you are running Linux, basically uh, just grab the Steam Beta client as I just mentioned. Again, I don't know where this leaves Mac OS users. There's instructions here for building for Mac. Uh, 
but I, I don't actually know if you can do anything. Because if it works and runs for Mac, I don't know why you wouldn't um, support this. So maybe it's coming soon, but that, that, uh, that verbiage does not sound no plans to support. So I think Mac users are probably just screwed, but who knows? Uh, you'll also see here that you can do some configurability compat eh, compatibility configurations here, such as um, using OpenGL-based Win3D instead of Vulkan for some reason. Uh, you can disable Direct3D 11, so it'll force it to use Direct3D 9. Uh, sometimes that actually will result in better performance, hell, even on Windows sometimes. Uh, but yeah, if, if you are a Linux gamer, go ahead and just basically download the beta client and you are good to go. If you're on a Mac gamer, maybe you're good to go. If you build Proton yourself, not really sure how that turns out, uh, but maybe definitely something worth looking into. Uh, and for game developers in general, what does this mean? What's the difference here? And the funny thing is, my conclusion is actually probably not the one that a lot of Linux developers want to hear. But if Valve's supporting um, Windows-developed games natively through this compatibility layer, and you basically, once you've installed the beta client, you can just download Windows games you own. So why would I develop a Linux version? That kind of hurts Linux development in some ways. So... I'm not really sure what this will do overall. It basically, it definitely expands the market of um, Linux gamers, but really to access them now, you basically just have to create that Windows version and this will take care of the translation for you. So it actually kind of discourages uh, Linux development in certain ways. So maybe I'm reading that wrong, but that's kind of my takeaway here. Um, like I really appreciate what Velve did and by no means, Velve is definitely a champion for Linux. So they never did this as a negative, but I think the end result is I see one less reason to support negative now where you can just create the Windows version and support the Windows version and, you know, the Linux gamers can buy that Windows version. So I'm not sure what the, the end game is going to be here. Now, the last thing we're going to get back to once again is that compatibility list. And right now, um, again, there's a set of whitelisted supported games that they're enabling right away. There are ways to um, enable games that aren't on this list, and this list is quite small. And a little random, if I'm honest, uh, but these are basically the applications that have been um, approved. Uh, so you can see right here, there's a lot of older games, to be honest, like mostly older games, actually. But this is what they're starting with. They will be enabling more titles in the near future as they continue to test them. If you want them to actually add something to their wish list, you can do that directly in the client once you have it. Uh, so it's going forward anyways. So you're going to basically be able to go in and mark that you're interested in actually grabbing a game. Uh, that's not the description of where to do it. But uh, And again, if it's not on this list, you still can try it out. There are instructions in here for how to do that, but um, it's not supported. So who knows what your end result is going to be. But all told, it's a pretty cool piece of news, especially if, you, if it literally just turns Steam into like this cross-platform, you know, doesn't matter what platform you're using. That's a big move by Steam. Good there. I, you know, I know that um, the Linux market isn't huge. We're talking maybe two or three percent of Steam. I'm guessing, if even that much. But this is the kind of thing that can really help grow Linux adoption because I know a lot of people that dual boot only dual boot so they can game on Windows. And I know also that using Wine and the various different other options out there have always been a bit of a pain in the butt. So having it integrated directly into that Steam client and making games just kind of platform independent, it could potentially be a really cool move. And also kind of makes sense why um, Valve has been backing projects like Molten VK and Lunar G. They suddenly make a lot more sense and they're really putting their money into Vulcan support. And I think Vulcan is, is you know, it's a solid choice, um, you know, to hell with what Apple thinks. I, I think it's a good move, and I think it's a good direction. And again, they've got an, a, that Molten VK allows you to run that Vulcan stuff on Mac products anyway, so that even doesn't matter. So kind of an interesting release today. That is the uh, release of Proton, a custom version of Wine for running games natively on Linux. So I'm interested to hear, are you a Linux gamer? Are you excited about this one? Have you already tried it out? How did it work for you? And most importantly, as a game developer, were you thinking about supporting the Linux platform and now you're thinking, well, why bother? I could just make it on this way. Let me know in the comments down below and stop my phone from ringing. All right, so that's it. And uh, yeah, let me know. I'm interested to hear what you've got to say and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.